of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Matt Benoff, and starring a celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Me, last night I had a wonderful dream. I'm a dream that we was all together again living in Italy, and the best part of all, Italy was a living in America. <laughs> <laughs> in my dream, Mamma Mia, you was a kept asking me how I'm a feel I shouldn't have buttoned up and a good to put on a good a new sweater and to keep it warm. And I says, No, no, I'm a plenty hot. Then I'm a woke up in the morning, a blanket was on the floor, and you was right, I'm almost a frozen to death. <laughs> <laughs> but then, Mamma Mia, you was always right. I remember when I was a little bambino, maybe six years old, and I'm got so mad with you, I'm going to decide to run away from our home in the Castle Mari. He was a packing me up a nice lunch basket, give me some extra clothes, put some money in my pocket, kiss me, and he was acting so nice, saying a goodbye, I'm going to decide to stay home. <laughs> but then I remember, remember when I was about 12 years old, and I was told you I'm going to marry Maria, the girl from the next farm? You didn't say no. You didn't holler. You didn't laugh. You just said, good luck, my son. Then I'm got the mumps. Maria's got the middles. The missus was no wedding that week. <laughs> oh, there's so many nice things to remember, Mamma Mia. Especially the little song you was always used to sing it to me. That the song was for everything. When I was a sad, when I was a happy, sleepy, grouchy, everything... La 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 I'm just a sang the song to myself, Mamma Mia. And it's making me feel so sad that if I was living in the Arctic Ocean, I would have started to swim a home. Well, is it time enough for me to go to my night school? But I don't know how I'm going to stop thinking about Castellamaria. <laughs> Quiet, lad, please. Pass all the rows. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Howard? Here. Mr. Olson? Mr. Schultz? He was drafted. Mr. Schultz, don't be silly. You're too old for military service. Louder, Miss Pauling. I want my draft board to hear that. (laughs) I'm smiling, Miss Pauling. I was only joking. Anytime Uncle Sam wants Schultz, he can be stuck with it. All right, Mr. Schultz, now let's get on with our lesson. Today we are studying the economic geography of America. Who will tell us some of the main agricultural areas? Mr. Howitt? Certainly. Lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, and scallions. <laughs> Mr. Howitt, I'm not asking you to guess. Oh, goodness, we're way behind our schedule. Now, Mr. Olson, you better tell them. Yeah. Oh, uh, agriculturally, the United States has a cotton belt, a corn belt, and a wheat belt. Himmel, with all those bells, we should change the name of the country to Hicka. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that will be enough out of you. Mr. Basco, name one state in the cotton belt. Castella Mare. What? Mr. Basco, you must be daydreaming. Daydreaming in night school? Luigi must be on Chinese standard time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Miss Pauling, Castella Mare is a little town. It's got a few farms, some chickens, some goats, and lots of wonderful people. Mr. Basco, are you trying to be funny? Funny? Miss Foley, Castellamari is where Luigi was born. That's right. 
have a dream all about my town last night, Miss Spalding, and about my mama. Ah, oh, you should have seen how beautiful she looked. Well, I'm sure she did, Mr. Basso, but now let's get Miss Spalding, on. you want to see some pictures of her? Uh, Mr. Basso, will you please try to concentrate on your work? We have a certain amount of material to cover, and if we are constantly annoyed by personal interruptions, we won't accomplish anything. You understand? There's nobody you know more. After all, you're old enough to realize that there's a place for general conversation and a place for learning. I'm sorry, Miss Spalding. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Show me your mother's picture. Oh, that Luigi, in his own quiet way, he catches a honey with honey. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, Miss Bunning. I'm going to show you. See? Look. Isn't she beautiful? Mr. Basco, isn't she beautiful? I'm asking you first. <laughs> <laughs> May I see Miss Balding? Thank you. My, that's a fine-looking woman. You got her eyes and her nose, Luigi. <laughs> that's right. I was used to have her accent, too, but since I'm a come to America, I'm a lost to that. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Levici, I haven't seen you like this in a long time. Uh, can it be that you are home? Maybe. Just a little bit, also. Well, that's only natural. Mom and friends go, but a mama is always a mama. You know something? No matter how far you go away from her, no matter what you do, if you're right or if you're wrong, your mama still loves you just the same. Oh, if I was Morton Downey now, would I let out a mother McCree? <laughs> ah, smile, Luigi. Someday you'll make a lot of money and you'll take a trip back home to see your mama. Come and remember the wonderful song that she's always singing to me. La, 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 when I was a little baby, my mama used to sing a song to me called Hase a Bibelach. That's all wrong, according to modern psychology. If the infant should be taught that sleep is a human necessity, and he should not have to be wooed to slumber by the crooning of a loony tune. <laughs> oh, then your mama probably put you to sleep with a baseball bat. Jules, I don't think that's so funny. All right, all right, quiet. Mr. Vasco. Yes, Miss Foley. What was the name of that town you were born in? Castellamare. Castellamare. You know, I read that name somewhere in today's paper. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, here in the music section. I'll read it to you. Music note. Jacob Gimple, noted concert pianist, has just returned from a highly successful series of appearances abroad. In Italy, he played before cheering audiences at Rome, Naples, Venice, and Castellamare. Castellamare? And here's the advertisement. Jacob Gimple, 8.30 tomorrow night at the Chicago Opera House. Castellamare, Mamma mia, I'm going to talk to him. Does anybody know where this Mr. Gimple lives? I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? Then why should anybody know Luigi? After all, does Gimple tell Maisie's? <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Come on, I'm going to find him town. And if he's a play there, my mom is going to see him. And if she's going to see him, then she's going to give him something to give to me. Would you be surprised if this gimple brought you Uncle Pietro's goat? <laughs> well, she said, I'm going to know what she's going to give him, but I'm sure it's something. You mustn't expect miracles, Luigi. You know, you know, after all, there, there would be quite a coincidence. No, but, but if she's a government something to give me, I'm a spirit. Miss Bolling, you mind if I'm a kid this piece of paper? Oh, no, of course not. Oh, thank you. Now, please, please excuse me, Miss Bolling. I'm going to run this quick and find this to Mr. Gimple. Go back. Poor Luigi. I think he's in for a big disappointment. Poor Gimple. By the time Luigi gets through with him, he's going to wish he never left Italy. <laughs> Hello, operator. I want information. This is information. What did you want, sir? Information. Where am I going to find Mr. Gimple? First name, please. Luigi. <laughs> Luigi Gimple? No, Luigi Basco. Did you wish the telephone number of Luigi Basco, sir? What the fuck? Then I'm going to be talking to myself. <laughs> Hello, please, operator. I'm going to talk to Mr. Gimple. Yes, and the first name, please. Luigi. <laughs> Mamma mia, we started the merry-go-round all over again. Sir, what is Mr. Gimbel's first name? The fir- 
Oh, excuse me. Wait, then let me see the paper. Oh, first the name is uh, Jacob. Just a moment, sir. I'm sorry, sir. There is no Jacob Gimble listed in the Chicago directory. Well, fella, maybe he's not going to afford the telephone. <laughs> I look at his information. Maybe he's just coming to visit in Chicago. Is this possible? I'm sorry, sir. We do not give out that information. Oh, well, I never mind. Thank you. I'm going to find out something like that. I'm going to find him. I'm got to. If only I was to have some big brain to help me. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Oh, Pascalia. I'm going to get the most wonderful news. Good. A big piano player has come back from Italy. He's played in a Castelli Mare. And I know he's brought to me something from my mom. Why? He told you? No, no, but I know. I can feel it inside. You ever have the feeling in your mind that you know he's a soul? Sure, sure. That's what they call a mental celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But if I got here, come and look at this paper. I'm going to get it from his father. Go ahead, see. Look, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I believe you. He's here. So what? Yeah, but don't you see, Pasquale, if my mama knew he was coming to Chicago next, she would have given me something to give it to me. What makes you so sure? Pasquale, last night I'm a dream of a home and a mama. And today I'm a feel I'm, I'm a feel of all empathy in his side. <laughs> ah, you poor little pumpkin head. <laughs> you know, Luigi, what your heart is really crying out for is a trip back home. Yes, you said that. To go back to home and hear my mama sing. La, 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 la. Oh, stop. La, stop. La, la. You're breaking my heart in itsy bitsy pieces. <laughs> Luigi, I tell you what. I'm going to finance you on a boat to quit the dead. You're going to find it? Oh, I thought I had to something from heaven. You... You're going to give me the money? That's all right, the little banana nose. Oh, that's all right. How how I can ever thank you? It's easy. I do you a favor. Now I want you should do me a favor. <laughs> oh, sure, Pascal. What the favor you want me to do for you? Oh, it's not too much, Luigi. When you sail back at the Castello Mare and the Queen of Mary, I want you should give some little present to your mama from me to her. I'm happy to. What a present you want me to do? <laughs> a daughter-in-law. <laughs> you, you mean Russia? I don't mean the Queen of Mary. <laughs> they both wear the same thing. <laughs> oh, the big so smart. And I look for Luigi. I'm offering you a square deal. But well, Russia is the roundest square deal I've ever saw. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wiseacre. The way you're making the money in America, you're going to see your mama only if they build a subway there for it. The way the fairs are going up, you won't even be able to afford that. Tell me, Miss Barry, I'm a gotta find this again for to talk with him. Oh, stop acting like such a dope for Luigi. You ask a Gimple if he's to bring a present from your mama in Italy, you know what he's going to say? What? He's going to say, what do you think I am, a carrier pigeon? <laughs> no, Pascal, you make a fun of me, but, but I'm still going to find this to Mr. Gimple. All right, Mr. Stubborn, here to go. Find the Gimple, insult him, and then let his musicians of union take the steps against you. Against me? That's all right, Luigi, for insulting a musician is the worst of punishment there is. They send you away for life to join the CPA. <laughs> CPA? Pascari, that's a certified public accountant. That's a, what do you think? You're going to spend the rest of your life in the Caesar Petrillo's army. <laughs> <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that will make your daily work a little easier and more enjoyable. Chew refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum while you work. You see, chewing on a good, smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint Gum just naturally helps you keep feeling right. It helps relieve that feeling of tension and pressure, gives you comfort and satisfaction. Then, too, Wrigley Spearmint Gum has a lively, long-lasting, real spearmint flavor that freshens your mouth and help keep your throat moist. Yes, friends, that little stick of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum can be a real help to you while you're working. Try it and see for yourself. Chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum on the job and see how the pleasant chewing makes your work go smoother and easier. (laughs) 
Now, let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm just spending two more hours trying to find out where this Jacob Gimple is living. I'm going to call up every hotel in Chicago, but no Gimple. When I'm told it's for Schultz, he says uh, Gimple must be sleeping in his piano. And then my friends say, oh, look at me like I'm a crazy mama, me, but sometimes the heart is smarter than a head. It's more than three years since I said the goodbye to you, and, and I'm getting something from you now, from somebody who's spoke to you in the last few days. That's almost like a touching you, mama, me. Oh, wait, wait, there's somebody to come. Well, Luigi, my fellow boobers, how did you make out? Did you find Gimple yet? No, sure, sir. I'm a told you on a telephone, I'm a tried every hotel. But there's only one possibility left. Ah, no, that's crazy. He would have no room for his piano there. Where is Schultz? The steam room at the YMCA. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> smile, Luigi. We've got to find this Gimple, even if he's living inside a jukebox. No, wait, Luigi, wait. Into my head, an idea just poofed. What? What is your The newspaper said Gimple's giving a concert tonight at the Chicago Opera House. Hmm? Oh, sure, I'm not sure about this before, but, but he's going to be too busy there. So what? In America, if you want to get something done, you got to grab the bull by the horn. Hello, folks. We talk of the bull, and the bull thrower shows up. <laughs> Don't get so smart, Mr. Delicatessen, sort of man. What are you doing, Luigi? You're getting a bad advice from a good troublemaker? No, Pascal, he's a good advice. I should see you right. I'm going to go to the council tonight and talk to Mr. Gimple at that. What? Luigi, for you, that would be the greatest catastrophe. Why? <laughs> How's it going to look? The Gimple's sitting there playing with some beautiful sympathy. The audience is getting nice and drowsy. Suddenly, Luigi jumps up and he yells out, Stop with the music. How's my mama? <laughs> no, no, Pascal, that's not the truth. Before you told me if I'm myself a piano player, all of Petrilli's armor is going to make me join the Caesars of Musicians Union. Oh, oh, oh. He tried to get you for shimmers. <laughs> Just do like I say, Luigi. Go downtown, buy yourself a ticket. Wait, wait, wait. All right. All right, Luigi. I confess. I, I did try to get you for shimmers. Because I was afraid if you go home, you'd forget the Rosa. Look, I'm willing to make up, and if there's any tickets to be bought, Pasquale's going to do the buy. You, Pasquale? There's got to be a catch someplace. <laughs> but a ticket is a ticket. Just make sure it's for the concert and not for parking overtime. <laughs> Don't worry. If I give her my word, I give it. But the trouble is, nobody dates her. <laughs> no, no, listen, listen. Then don't fight it. Don't fight it. I'm feeling so excited now. What do you think of my mom is sent to me, huh? Maybe one of her shows, huh? Or maybe her latest picture. Ah, you really miss her, Luigi. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Look, Luigi, promise me one thing. What? Don't be too disappointed if it's a gimple and maybe didn't see you, Mom, in Castello Mari. She didn't say any other thing. Pascal, that's impossible. Well, I, I, I said maybe. It's not maybe, the Pascal, and I don't say that. All right, all right. Stop yelling at me. I'm not your father-in-law yet, you know. <laughs> Hey, we, well, we, we got to go up a higher yet, the Pasquale? It's an hour so far back. Stop complaining. Not so far back. Pasquale, from here, the piano looks like a harmonica. <laughs> all right, all right. Here's the seats. Oh, what a big surprise. Look who's a coming, Luigi. Who? Oh, oh Mamma mia, it's Rosa. Rosa! Over here, Rosa! <laughs> Yes, my little Mario Lanza. <laughs> Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Hmm. I'm a trust there was a catch. No, no, Luigi. Uh, uh, Rosa, how come you happen to have an extra seat for Luigi? Oh, don't you remember, Papa? You bought it for me. Oh, shut up, you bitch. <laughs> come on, come on. Sit down, everybody. Papa, this seat is tight. Well, take a short breath. It's going to feel looser. <laughs> All right. Hey, look, look. Mr. Gimple is here. He's coming on the stage. You 
stuck. I'm stuck, too. Please, please, I must... He's going to start the concert now. All right, all right. I still think you're crazy going back to the stage like this. He's never even going to talk to you. No, come on. Come on, Pastor. Before he's going home. Hey, hey. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Please, Mr. Stage, the daughter, man. We want to see Mr. Gimp. Do you know you? No, but when he's to see me, he's going to be very happy. I'm sorry I can't let you in. Go right through me. Thank you. No, please, please. You've got to let me in. You've got to. Oh, Luigi, stop. People is to think you've got a pitomane poisoner from the concert. <laughs> What's the matter here? Please, please. Mr. Gimple is a got to see me. Maybe you can help him. Well, I'm his manager, but you can't see him now. Why not? Uh... And he's dressing. That's all right. Tell him I'm not going to look. <laughs> Tell him I'm Please, I'm... Mr. No, Basco. Luigi Basco. He's to see my mom in the Castellamare. What? Oh, come on, Luigi. It's no use. Castellamare. Oh, yes, Mr. Gimple played there. I oh, see you. See you remember. Well, please, Mr. Manager, I'm going to see Mr. Gimple because I know he's... He's got the something from my mama that she's the one to give it to me. You did? Well, do you know what it was? A, a book or a gift? No. I mean, no, no. Well, you know? I'm sorry, my friend. Look, I've been with Mr. Kibble every minute since he stepped off that plane. Unpacked and packed his luggage, had his clothes pressed. Certainly, I would have seen him carry something for you, even if it was only a note. He had nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing. The witches, and no use to repeat, and the five times or nothing, it don't make a something. <laughs> well, I've got to go in. Mr. Gibble must be waiting for me. Thank you. And goodbye. Well, goodbye, Mr. Basco, Luigi Basco. Just a minute. Did I hear the name Luigi Basco? Yeah, but... Mr. Gibble. Yeah, yeah, that's me, Luigi Basco. Come inside, my friend. I was going to look you up after the concert. Oh, you don't have to. I'm here. Oh, we, we, we heard you concert, Mr. Gibble. It was a beautiful day. Yes, yes. Especially that moonlight of Sinatra. <laughs> you know something? I could even enjoy that in the daytime. <laughs> I saw your mother in Castellamare. You did? You saw my mama? 
Oh, how wonderful. How marvelous. That's the way, Mr. Kimberly, until I will kiss you. It's all right. That's exactly how she felt when she talked about you, Lindsay. Oh, she... She was still all right. Everything is good. Fine. Fine. Oh, Mr. Gimple, tell me. My mom, she's... She's... Uh, give you something for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, why, yes. Of course she did. Hey, Pascal, you hear that? She's giving me something. Something in remembrance. What is it, Mr. Gimple? Well, well, what is it? Come here, Mr. Buckle. Over to the piano. Don't tell me she said a piano. <laughs> Marshal the plans are getting bigger all the time. <laughs> the piano? Yes. Here's what she asked me to bring you. Mamma no, mia, no, no, what the... What the could it be? Excuse me, Pascal. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hardly talk. Oh, Luigi, stop. I'm not going to talk to myself. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. I had the, the, the song. Pascal. What a song. Who's the crying about a song? Then, then why are you crying? I'm crying about a Rosa. She's still up there stuck in the sea. <laughs> Give me one of the biggest of pleasures since I'm coming to America. And I'm not lonesome no more. In fact, after Mr. Gimple's concert, I'm a fact so good, I'm even a help to Pascali. Oh, yes, sir. We was to finally get a Rosa out of the sea, sir. By we, I mean me, Pasquale, and a hook and a lot of company, 93. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that you'll find Wrigley Spearmint Gum a friendly, helpful companion to take with you wherever you go. At work, in your car, out shopping, no matter where you happen to be, you can slip a stick of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum in your mouth and enjoy some mighty good chewing. Wrigley Spearmint freshens your taste, sweetens your breath, and the chewing action helps keep your teeth clean and bright. So chew a stick of Wrigley Spearmint gum from time to time every day. Enjoy that delicious Wrigley Spearmint flavor and enjoy the good smooth chew. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum and carry a package or two with you wherever you go. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Paulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. And our special thanks to Mr. Jacob Gimple for pausing on his concert tour to spend the evening with us. Luigi's song was composed by Fred Steiner. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Ryan with the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>